Sometimes I wonder, is life really worth it? There are times I'm tempted to say no. There are certain things that a movie critic can't do. Things that just shouldn't be done. Some mountains are just too tall to scale. I mean, there's bravery and, and there's just plain suicide. Maybe nobody asked for this. Well, okay, lots of people asked for it. But, I mean, just look at it. It's... Oh my. Hello, my name is Hunter, the movie reviewing pony, because when it comes to cinema, humans cannot be trusted. Which has been made blatantly obvious given today's movie and it interrupting what should have been a wonderful day at the beach. Thanks for that, by the way. I really appreciate how I was dragged in here during my time off. I don't even know what to make of this movie. I don't even know how to lead into this movie because where do we even get this? What barrel did we scrape this out of the bottom of? It's like the barrel in the back of the cellar that nobody wants to go near because it's buried underneath all of the other barrels, so it just sits there neglected for centuries. Then when you finally open that barrel, it's like Pandora's box and you've unleashed terror upon the world. So naturally, our producers thought it would be a great idea to throw that terror at me during my vacation. I am, of course, talking about the uncomfortably large garbage heap that is the amazing bulk. Now, I've worked on some real crap with this series, but this one takes the cake. All of the cake. Every single cake that was on the shelf. It took all of them! Seriously, Food Fight could at least afford to be a full-length feature film. Titanic 2 could at least afford to film on a fucking cruise ship. Santa Claus Conquers the Martians could at least afford a fucking set! Do you think it can't get much worse than that? Oh, ho! At least Fred the Movie resembled something that looked like a movie! This, this, is a garbage heap assembled out of already pre-assembled assets. It's Asset Flip the movie. It's little Billy figured out how to use a green screen, got his friends together, and decided to make a movie. Little did they realize this was his college film project, so nobody took it seriously, and he just didn't pick up any of the slack whatsoever. They all flunked out of college, and little Billy was doomed to a life in a motel room huffing paint thinner. Man, that got dark. But you know what? I don't think that's dark enough. I don't think that's enough to justify just how flippin' terrible this asset flip of a movie is. Also doesn't help when the film's director, if you can call it that, both the film and the director, is known for nothing but garbage. The guy currently teaches at the International Academy of Film and Television in the Philippines. And you know what? With a resume like The Amazing Bulk, I can't imagine the entry requirements to teach at this school are very high. Yeah, no, you did a good job with this Lewis Schonbrunn. Really contributing to the film industry as a whole. You've given everyone a fantastic reference guide as to what not to do when making a movie. Cause I mentally and physically cannot fathom a stupider movie than this. So, with that amazing build-up, let's suffer through the amazing bulk. The amazing bulk. The amazingly stupid bulk. 
So our film opens up, and this movie doesn't really have a production company, so they're trying to make us think we're watching a Universal presentation, saying feature presentation and mimicking the Universal logo, followed by mimicking the Fox logo. And the Paramount logo, apparently. Okay, you do realize that A, none of these companies would ever work together, and B, you've just been saying feature presentation a whole bunch of times, right? Also, according to them, Universal is run by the MBA, which is a Master of Business Administration, which is a degree that you get from college. Which they would have realized if literally everyone involved in this movie wasn't a high school dropout. It also makes the claim that 20th Century Fox is not a new corporation and Paramount was once a viable company. Are, are, are they still trying to fool us or are they trying to make a joke? Either way, we're not into the movie yet. Finally, as this asinine film opens up, we get some names attached to the film Label Productions which according to everything I've read on the internet, doesn't actually exist. This will be a first for me because these titles are literally assembled in Movie Maker with the Comic Sans font. The absolute most these guys sprang for is a pirated copy of Sony Vegas. So as the film opens up proper, it's just, oh, 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 okay, that's the lightning effects, and that's the rain effect, and this is the 3D render of this, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> this is one of those special movies that makes me want to jump off the roof of a building and then end up in the hospital where the doctor is gonna have to listen to my problems with this movie for hours and hours and hours until it gets to the point where he too wants to jump off of the building and does so where he also ends up in the emergency room and are you starting to see the pattern emerging here? It's at the end of the day on a very solemn episode of Hunter Reviews, everybody dies. So this woman we never learned the name of decides that it's a good idea to walk into a back alley. Because reasons! Halfway down the alley, she decides to stop and pull out a cigarette. Because reasons! And then this guy comes out of nowhere, puts a gun in her mouth, there's this purple guy, and then he shoots her brains out. Because reasons! What follows is some of the worst gun effects we've ever seen in a movie. The guy dying, and then this giant purple thing walking uncomfortably slowly down the alleyway. Still running. It's worth noting at this point, this was edited together by three fucking people. After that, we get an opening title sequence, where the titles are in Comic Sans, and all of the visuals look like they were stolen from a show that was a mix between General Hospital and Bill Nye the Science Guy. Of course, this opening title bit is the only Bill Nye the Science Guy thing about this movie. The rest is just General Hospital. Think really shoestring budget with actors who are creepier than they are talented. I have this deep inner hatred for General Hospital and soap operas as a whole. So as the movie opens, uh, oh, what fresh hell is this? This looks like one of those cinematic things that the movie theater makes telling you to deposit your trash, only worse. Turns out that thing is leading into the police who are investigating the death of the two people that we saw before the opening title sequence. And let me tell you, this acting, oh ho ho, this acting, just, this fucking acting. Hey Lisa, take a look at this. What do you make of it? Looks like blood. Or something. I don't know. I never saw purple blood before. Yeah, well, this whole crime scene is one big mystery now, ain't it? Everything about this shot is wrong. We got terrible and obvious green screening. 
We got audio mixing where the background sound effects can overpower their voices at times. And a less convincing performance than a cardboard cutout at a shopping mall. Not even a good shopping mall. I mean a bad shopping mall. One that's going out of business. And now here's the shot of an ambulance driving away. At least Birdemic 2 could afford to shoot on a beach where they could put the fake ambulance. So they decide this film isn't jumping around enough. It cuts to one day earlier. Where from the looks of it, we're somewhere in sunny Florida. Where the weather is humid and everyone is old. Oh, uh, no, wait, no, we're... So we're in the slums of New York. Okay, now we're in... Okay, now there's some micro... Okay, now we're in the fakest ninth grade science lab I ever did see. Everyone got a good idea as to where we are right now? Good, because I would hope so, because they made it very obvious. This is our main character, Hank. He's a brilliant scientist, which is really disheartening, because he looks like the main character from Ride to Hell Retribution. His job, if you can call it that, is to work in this high school science lab all day, developing a super soldier serum for the military. All the while giving us an uncomfortable amount of exposition, like, we're developing this for a military general. This guy is interested in the general's daughter. Or, they totally suck at making super soldier serum. Maybe the whole process would go a little bit better if they, you know, had more than two people working in the lab. But since there are only two people working in the lab, all they've managed to figure out how to do is make rats disappear in a puff of smoke. Incredibly fake looking rats, if I may add. And then Girl walks in, because this is definitely a secure facility. I mean, I know this is the general's daughter, but come on, really? Is it really this easy to break into government facilities? You know, on second thought, don't answer that. It was pretty fucking easy for Donald Trump to break into the White House. And the humans still can't get him to leave. So the two of them decide to go on a date, I guess, and oh my god! That, that, that is the real effects! This is what people who are normally in love do, yeah? Yeah, the movie's getting it right. You okay? Yes, we are enjoying this wonderful frolic through the earth flowers as two humans who have formed a love contract would. Okay, taking things seriously now. Let's just take a couple steps back and ask what the hell is going on? Well, we're just having a lovely frolic through the flowers here in what appears to be the Garden of fucking Eden. Or at least to whatever extent we can recreate the Garden of Eden with pre-assembled assets. There's probably fewer pre-packaged assets on Steam right now than there are in this movie. So we cut back to the slums, which is apparently where this lab is located. These two hammer in the fact that he's in love and they suck at making super soldier serum. So naturally, it's time to science the shit out of everything in this lab. Which results in about 40 seconds of this. Yeah, I think I remember seeing some of these visuals in the opening for Bill Nye the Science Guy. Also, the rat explodes. Making me wonder if they're trying to create a super soldier serum or just a new, more effective version of nitroglycerin. And then Hank gets mad, ooh. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, yeah, okay, sure. That was a real good way to spend a full minute of my life. You're telling me this is supposed to be a brilliant scientist? Because he's about as mentally stable as the Joker from Batman. The only downside there is, at least every iteration I've seen of the Joker could act. Even the plastic ones. 
Then we go to the fakest house in the world where everything is fake, even the water from the fountain and the front door and everything is fake and the stars in the background are also fake. But oh no, this is where his weird girlfriend lives who he's planning to propose to, which is rather unfortunate because I have reason to believe that she's fake too. <laughs> wow, this is how you greet the mailman. Have you seen my mailman? I take blackmail for me to kiss that frog. Oh, it's a video. Yeah, okay, movie, and yes, there's massive sarcasm quotes around the word movie. I get it. You're very, 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 very low budget. But did you have to record this in a fucking bathroom? Oh, but I love recording in my readily available echo chamber! I hate dust. I don't want it building up in my home. I'm not entirely sure why he said that, but he said that. So then again, in his defense, there are certain things that I don't want paired in with all of my stuff. Maybe there's something scary around here. For all I know, there's shit that... Jesus Christ, how the fuck did that get in the house? This character is General Darwin. He's weird. He's the one who is having Hank make the super soldier serum. Wait. Don't speak. There could be spies listening. Let's go somewhere private. Follow me. What's more personal well, than the library or in your own fucking house? Oh, okay, your personal wine cellar. Of course. How insecure even is your house if you have to say something like that? And how is moving to a different room going to fix the problem? They're not even walking, they're just in front of a small green screen. They're like, pretend walking. Which makes me wonder how they get anywhere in this movie at all. Like I so said, Hank here drops the news that he wants like to marry his, his daughter, and he what doesn't about? like this at all. Well, you knock up my little girl, is that it, huh? Of course not. Then why? What's a Regent piss at? God, I love her, okay? That's why. I love her. Not a bad answer. Oh, well, see, at least you can be reasonable about it. But the general, which is what I'm going to call him, isn't going to let him marry his daughter unless he can finish the super soldier serum before the government cuts their funding. Because the government definitely has enemies that need to be fought with super soldiers. Eat your heart out, taxpayers. Your money is going to this loser. How much funding could this super soldier program possibly have if it's being conducted out of a lab in the middle of the slums in what looks like a high school science lab? What's the current military taxpayer percentage? Like 60%? Yeah, no. It should be like 5%. NASA gets fucking half a penny, but the dumbass president of the United States yet wants to build a space force. You can't even create super soldiers because you got this dumbass doing it. Who's gonna manage your space force, the hunchback of Notre fucking Dom? Uh, so then we cut to uh, bats in the middle of the night and a weird, creepy, 3D castle asset, and then this. Yeah, okay. I gave up time on the beach for this, you bitch. This is the daughter of our villain, I think. Maybe not. I don't think the plot ever makes that very clear. This table has been in my family for hundreds and hundreds of years. How many times have I told you not to keep your cosmetics on it? Great, so our villain wears a really dark purple suit and has a wig that's barely attached and is played by an actor that doesn't really want to commit to a German accent so he has it fade in and out. And they sit here and have a conversation for like three straight minutes! 
this conversation appears to be about nothing, and there's these two guards in the room also who are wearing jeans and black t-shirts, because that is the best uniform they could possibly come up with on the budget! Part of me doesn't want to believe that, but this movie couldn't even afford a real fucking dog! Then he pulls out a lightning gun and shoots one of the guards with the lightning gun, because apparently this guy is now with your stereotypical standard supervillain, but with way worse special effects. Then these two pretend to walk down this fake hallway. I want to put emphasis on the pretend because they're, they're not even trying at this point. They weren't trying before and they're trying even less now somehow. This hallway leads to a control room with a monkey playing with a rocket and Mozart playing a violin on a TV screen in the background. Did I stutter? Then why don't you push the button, my liebchen? Uh -huh. You've never ever heard a German ever speak in your entire life ever, have you? I could do a better German accent than this in my sleep. In fact, yeah, no, no, I'll do it. Because quite frankly, in my honest opinion, you, the, your German accent is quite offensive. Also, I take it we will never begin to get explanation as to why Mozart is writing music in the background. Okay, very well, they're just going to roll the stock footage of American rockets flying into space. Normally, I would try to nitpick every single thing in the scene, but with this movie, there is just not time. Okay, I'm done. Because what follows is actually just that thing that I just said. Some of these aren't even missiles, it's just rockets. Followed by a completely different missile blowing up the Institute of German Scientists. Followed by the girl having an orgasm. Was she high? That She had to have been high while filming this. Oh, but fasten your seatbelts because for the next straight minute it is nothing but stock footage of stock rockets blowing up stock assets of buildings to a copyright-free version of Mozart. But we immediately cut away from that for the 4th of July or some shit as we get stock footage of fireworks. Oh, I see. We've cut back to these two in their perfect world, where London Bridge, the Sphinx, the Great Wall of China, and the Taj Mahal didn't get blown up, I think. Are we not going to talk about the last ten minutes of the film? Or, uh, uh, we're just gonna, we're gonna, oh, okay. Now we're on a roller coaster. A roller coaster with a very bad frame rate. Couldn't stop to find a roller coaster with a better frame rate. HAD TO GET THESE ASSETS AS QUICKLY AS POSSIBLE! This movie's like a gift basket of randomly assorted crap. Except the gift basket feels like a bomb. Cause the next scene apparently we're on the subway and we're getting mugged. Because the best place to mug someone is on a public train in- which is an enclosed space with nowhere else to run. And then the guy steals the wedding ring, and he gets away. Our cast is actually so stupid that they somehow managed to lose this guy on an enclosed train car. Did anyone working on this movie stop for two fucking seconds to think of how stupid a place this would be to rob somebody? The train didn't stop, he didn't get off, yet he still manages to get away. Oh no, don't worry movie, I get it. This is your world, your magical world, where super soldier serum is created in the slums, a monkey is allowed in a control room right next to a missile launch button, and the Titanic is a very INNOVATIVE SUBMARINE! HOW THE FUCK IS THIS MOVIE EVEN POSSIBLE?! Oh, is he? 
in your pocket that was worth risking your life for? Look, it was just a, a flash drive of some documents on an experiment, okay? It was top secret stuff. I mean, if it fell in the wrong hands, there's no telling what could happen. Because that's what you should be carrying around! This is unbelievable. It's actually unbelievable. You think the movie can't get any dumber, and it actually, at that very moment, turns around and does yet another stupid thing and digs itself into an even deeper hole. And then there's a red car. And then they're in the car because we had the car this whole time, but we took the train for some reason! And they were just stacking stock footage on top of stock footage on top of images that we made in MS Paint. And just like that, bippity boppity boo, we're driving through the city. And then we stop in front of General Paranoia's house as we proceed to hammer in the plot some more for about 45 seconds or so. You know, just in case we've forgotten the plot of the movie after this long. Which, to be fair, is very, very convoluted. So we go back to the lab to research new and creative ways for us to just randomly use stock footage that we found on the internet. We paid for it, so we have to use it somehow. So finally, a little bit under halfway through a movie called The Amazing Bulk, the movies decided that we've used enough stock footage to progress the plot. Because Hank has apparently perfected a formula that can bring plants back to life. Which I guess is this universe's equivalent of super soldier crap. I need bigger results. I need them fast. So without even a smidgen of hesitation, he injects himself with the serum. This brilliant scientist who has invented a super soldier serum just did this. And it causes everything in his body to turn purple. And then there's a purple hand or some shit. I don't know. Maybe he turned into Grimace from McDonald's. Or in the next scene he'll be completely back to normal. Because, of course. Apparently the... Turning purple was just temporary, he's just completely back to normal. Maybe it'll lead to this movie's biggest plot twist of all. It's not a parody of The Incredible Hulk, it's a parody of Captain America. I mean, think about it, we couldn't see what was going on in the super soldier vat, he could have turned purple. Prove me wrong. Unfortunately, that would have been creative as a tornado enveloped Hank and he turns into this. Oh, good. Oh, good. Also, yeah, it's a, it's a reshoot of the first scene from the movie. Using the exact same crappy effects and everything. Nobody learned anything. Uh, okay, and then he's back to normal. Okay, yeah, I, I, I think this movie just failed the Turing test. And then he's back to being the Incredible Hulk. Which makes me believe he has full control of whatever he can do that. Wasn't that like half the point of the Incredible Hulk was that it only happened when he was angry? You've basically now taken away half of the reason to even make a parody movie about the Incredible Hulk because that was what gave the character depth. So then we cut to the Great Wall of China where the villain is talking to these two people and they're trying to figure out the plot of the movie. I have to ask everything in the form of a question because no one knows what's going on. We were in the city, we met up with Scully. I told him he's got a debt and he's got to pay now. And then I asked him how he'd like to go swimming in the river with cement slippers. No, you didn't, I said that. Fine, whatever. You said it. Are you happy? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact. <sighs> You're stalling. Every single fucking thing that comes out of every single person's fucking mouth is a device intended to stall for time in a method to pad the film. 
which doesn't even last for an hour and a half. So congratulations, movie. You weren't even good enough to pad this thing out to an hour and a half. Thinking about taking a film. <laughs> yeah, I actually, I said that. I, I like how that sounded. Oh, uh, thank you, Camp Love, sir. You know, I did a bit of research, and our villain guy here was actually voted most likely person to be stabbed on a freight train. But before you have time to think about that, we cut away from the scene in a blood transition back to New York City, I guess, where our protagonist, Hank, which is his name, discovers that he still has purple stuff on him. Purple stuff. And then he's being questioned by those two cops from the beginning because he dropped know. his wallet, apparently, back where I the guy got it. killed. Where'd you find it? A better question is, how'd you lose it? I think the even better question is, why are we talking like this? And then we go into this obnoxiously long retelling of the last 15 minutes of film detailing the mugging on the train. At this point, about half of the movie seems to be explaining the other half of the movie. If it can even be called a movie, which, spoiler alert, it can't. Because this movie has about the tenacity of a recap episode in an anime. You haven't said a word since we talked to that Henry Howard guy. Whatever do you mean, my darling? Don't play coy with me, Garton. You got the look on your face. Yeah, what look you talking about? The look, when you know something that I don't. Oh yeah, that look. I believe I do know the one. Spill the beans, will you? Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! So, naturally, the next logical thing for Hank to do would be to go to the crime scene, I guess. Except, no. He literally has no reason to go there whatsoever. Whoa, whoa, wait. It's not what it looks like. Like I said, they always come back to the scene of the crime. We're gonna have to take you down to the station. I don't think that'd be a good idea. You don't want to do that. Whoa. The hell just happened? I don't think that'd be a good idea. You don't want to do that. Did they move from the bedroom into the bathroom for recording mid-scene? What the hell is going on? Also, he then loses control and turns into the Incredible Hulk again because apparently he doesn't have control all of the sudden even though he clearly does. What the hell's going on? What, what, why, and how, and why, again? Good thing I called for backup. Backup? You're gonna need an army to take down that monster! I mean, sure, it's a very bad situation all around, but at least Hank has the decency to just stand there and let them have this conversation. Also, what follows is an obnoxious chase scene with obnoxious stock assets, and these two firing more bullets without reloading than the characters from Birdemic. Also, them running in place. So, technically, it's not even a chase scene. So they fail that, too. This goes on for three minutes! It's three minutes of these two shooting off-screen random assortments of crap that they purchased on the Unity engine, and Hank running down this one street, ramming into every object in sight, this guy shooting, and then him proceeding to run down the same street. They only have about five backgrounds for this entire chase scene. You gotta move in a little closer. I need a better shot. Closer? Cut me out of your mind! I don't know what the hell that thing is down there, and I sure as hell don't want to find out! Because the interior of a helicopter is definitely gonna sound this echoey. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, and, and kill myself now with, with, my, uh, with my ceremonial dagger, because... <laughs> It's not going to get any better than this. The next straight two and a half minutes, I timed it, is nothing but this crap. All the stock assets, all the crappy audio quality, all the crappy acting, all the crappy what's-her-face getting killed. Lisa! Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Her name is Lisa, and I didn't make a single room joke? Well, I'm doing it now. You're part of my life. You are everything. I could not go on without you, Lisa. 
So finally, about an eternity later, Hank gets tired and turns back into a human. Though, to be honest, can anyone in this movie be called human? Anyone? You son of a bitch! <sighs> because firing 10 million bullets without reloading up to this point was perfectly acceptable, but now's a fairly reasonable time to run out of ammunition. Now for plan B. <sighs> which apparently involves the fakest looking punch in the world and getting thrown in jail in the middle of the desert. And by jail, I of course mean a building that is cobbled together with as many stock assets as possible to make it look like a jail. We're still in front of the green screen. It's not even good green screen. I mean, come on, I'm not asking for Avatar or anything, but you can do better than this. I mean, you look up tutorials on how to green screen in Sony Vegas, and then it's just a matter of adding a whole bunch of layers on top of layers. You could assemble this movie with a maximum of four layers. Three for the video and one for the audio. Maybe two. The video you're watching right now is assembled with six layers of video and five different layers of audio. I wouldn't be so angry about it, believe me, I wouldn't. But that's if this was some pathetic project that someone uploaded on the internet. This was sold on the shelves and it's making everyone look bad. And before I ask the question, oh, how can I get any worse? I fully expect it to top this somehow. Go on, give it two seconds. What's up, Doc? <laughs> And there it is. We are now recording audio on actual walkie fucking talkies. What's I mean, it's on? not just Don't that it's that terrible. Memory. It's the Back. various well, different ways that it's down. terrible. This movie yeah. just can't seem to stick to yeah. one yeah. kind of terrible. Yeah. It just wants yeah. to branch yeah. out to all yeah. kinds of different yeah. kinds of terrible. Yeah. Keep in mind the yeah. bastard who directed this got a teaching job at a film school after this. Also, the acting is bad. That's pretty obvious, but I felt it need to be said. You almost had me there, soldier, but I was too fast for you. Sweet dreams, you purple pile of cow dung. Oh my god, he is so bad, and he says the stupidest shit in this movie. I hate dust. I don't want it building up in my home. Do Wait, you? don't speak. There could be spies listening. What's up, Doc? <laughs> then we cut over to this really dark castle where the villain and What's-Her-Face are dancing on the Hollywood Star Walk of Fame with a fake dog which is actually in their living room. Imagine hearing all of that out of context. They have a conversation that goes on for around about a minute about pretty much nothing, followed by as much NASA stock footage that they could afford. This includes but is not limited to actual video footage of rockets being launched, random assorted crap pulled off of the internet, and 3D representations of space stations being put together. Oh, God, are you serious? Well, that's it. We've officially hit the low point. It cannot get any worse than using NASA footage to make it look like space stations are having sex. You know, I didn't think at any point during my life I would have to say the phrase space stations having sex. Oh, God, I just said it again. This is real! This is actually real! I didn't edit this! Why would I edit this? Why would anyone edit this? This whole scene goes on for just under three minutes. None of it is in context. We have no idea what's even going on! The plot here is barely explained at all, if at all. This movie is the product of a sick, twisted, and demented mind! What's wrong with y'all? You niggas are crazy! And then we get stock footage of barbed wire, meant to represent a research facility where they are researching the shit out of Hank. Because I guess the plot isn't boring and predictable enough yet. Though we just saw space stations having sex, so I don't know what to think anymore. No 
one expected you to inject yourself with a serum. That was idiotic of you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, huh. okay. The movie is trying to acknowledge that it in itself is stupid. Great. Good to know that you acknowledge that you regret every single career decision you made up to this point. But before I blow my brains out... Tell me why... Look, I did it for Hannah. Look, buddy, I like women. I, I love women, in fact. But as much as I love them, I don't want to move a mountain range for them. What I'm getting at here is, you're stupid. You're all stupid. Every single one of you is stupid. So it turns out that there's an antidote for his Incredible Hulk syndrome, but before they give it to him, they want him to stop What's-His-Face, who's launching missiles and making space stations have sex. You're the only hope mankind has of surviving. And I'd just like to point out, he says this when the militaries of the world haven't actually tried anything to stop him. There is a madman by the name Dr. Kantla. He's sending off missiles, blowing up monuments around the world. It's all over the news. We believe he is sending a rocket to the moon and plans to blow it up. Fucking why? The villain in this movie has a severe lack of plan and end game goals. He has no motive or anything driving him forward and is purely in this movie to serve as the plot device of a villain. Everything about his character is lazily written and stupid. Up until now, there has been zero mention of him from our main cast, and it honestly feels like he's in a separate movie. And now we're going to send someone who I believe is not only a danger to himself, but everyone around him over to fight this guy who's trying to blow up the moon for no adequately explained reason whatsoever. At least when Gru was going to steal the moon, he was going to sell it off for massive profit. This guy just seems to want to blow up the moon because, quite frankly, I think he's insane! Like every other character in this movie! So they send him in in their asset flip of a helicopter, oh boy! We're almost to the checkpoint! Any closer a camera will pick me up on the radar! You know what to do, right? Yeah, I'm all set. Good luck, hey. We've gone past making fun of them in the bathroom. So now we're gonna move into a room that's even more echoey! The Shed! Oh, we can do some great recording in here! This is turning into a stand-up comedy routine! That is if it wasn't one already, which it might be! But then there's some stock footage and stock photos from the moon landing depicting a rocket landing on the moon, which I guess is the bomb, but then, then this happens. No more honeymoon or reruns for me. The time is now. One of these days. One of these days! What the hell is going on?! You can't just do this! You don't have any context for half of the crap that you're doing in this movie! Why would you even buy half of these backdrops?! The things that are relevant to the plot you don't even explain! I mean, for the love of God, let's stop and think about this for a second. We're making an action movie, which is a parody of The Incredible Hulk. What kind of assets should we buy? Oh, how about a leprechaun with a rainbow? An enchanted garden in a colorful valley? A fantasy castle? While we're at it, maybe one of those clips that you get in the movie theater telling you to deposit your trash right before the movie starts? Because that's about the quality we're at now. Except I think those are better. And then he turns into Barney the fucking dinosaur and spends, I kid you not, two minutes and 18 seconds. I timed it again because I feel like it deserves to be timed. All he does is run around killing guards. The useless, terrible guards, which I don't even have guns, so I don't know why we couldn't send in the army. Uh, 
You know, at least the pathetic acting in Birdemic was endearingly funny. This is just pathetic. You got a fish. Good. Oh, and you think it can't get any worse than this. It can't possibly get any stupider than this. Then this happens. Is that you, baby? That's where you've been spending your free time. At the gym. Mm, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. No. No, my. stop that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop. Stop. Fucking stop. Stop it. Get some help. This stop sign is an octagon. And she's promptly killed without hesitation. Which is immediately followed by a goblin and a dog before I can cut away from the scene. There's no context for any of it, and I don't know why they bought half of these assets. I have reason to believe that the person buying all of these assets was high, and if they weren't, I recommend they have a CAT scan to look for a tumor pressing on the cognitive processing centers of their brain! In our encounter with the villain, and yes, there are massive sarcasm quotes around the word villain, it lasts about 30 seconds and then he's dead. And pretty much all of the encounter consists of him begging for his life. Why were we even scared of this guy in the first place? His plan makes no sense. Over the course of three minutes, we came in here and destroyed him. He doesn't have any motives. He wasn't holding the world ransom for one million dollars or any of that kinds of shit. Even if this is a joke movie, which I'm pretty sure it isn't, this is pathetic writing. What's wrong with you? But oh no, oh God, the movie isn't over. I'm afraid I wasn't telling the truth, Henry. There is no antidote. What do you mean? No cure that will bring you back to your former self. You see, the government stopped funding my project two years ago. So I looked elsewhere for funding. Dr. Ken Love was more than willing to dole out any amount of cash. That's the dumbest plot twist I've ever heard. He wanted the serum he said as a cure for his ED. You're fucking kidding me with this, right? The, the, the whole evil plot was because this guy has erectile dysfunction. This wasn't about creating an army of super soldiers, it was about erectile dysfunction. Newsflash, morons! That is incredibly treatable! And are you seriously telling me that the stupid plot of this stupid movie has to come down to something as stupid as erectile dysfunction? Okay, that's it. It's safe to say this now. This is the worst thing humanity has ever done. I no longer needed his backing. So I had no choice other than to eliminate him. Uh, no. In fact, you had a lot of choices as to where you could have gone from there. So now the general says that he's gonna use the serum to create an army of super soldiers, which was the original plan, if I recall correctly, and he goes forward with his sudden but inevitable betrayal. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. And then, somehow, incredibly, the movie somehow manages to devolve. Because the next three minutes of film is just a bunch of crap. This movie costs real money, by the way. It wasn't free. Yeah, no, this is perfectly fine. We have a whole bunch of assets that we haven't used yet, so we might as well use them now. You know, all of our World War II era fighter planes, our M2 Bradleys, kittens on a swing set, a teeter-totter, some guy running through an urban environment, a gecko on a laptop, the Red Baron. The Red Baron. It's all just random assortments of crap that you've put together with your stupid model running in that default running animation for three straight minutes! Three! It was three! Three! I've heard. 
heard of lazy, stupid methods to pad a film, but I've never seen someone go onto a freaking 3D model storefront, buy a bunch of crap, and just throw it into the movie. This is so unbearably lazy and so unbearingly uncreative. People made this. This is a thing that was created willingly. This gets so bad even to the point that God himself has had enough of this movie and he's trying to kill Hank. So finally, about an eternity later, we drop a bomb on him in apparently the most racist way we could possibly think to drop a bomb on him. Really taking a while for that bomb to hit the ground there. And then these two show up. And then we cut back to the movie. Oh, you wanted context? <laughs> You're watching The Amazing Bulk, so fuck you. So yeah, I guess Hank is really dead. Oh wait, we cut to him later that night at the general's house where he's meeting his daughter. And then he asks Hannah to marry him, and then she says yes. And then, oh no, the general finds them! And the most intense shoving match in the universe ensues. And at some point they fall off the roof and die. Of the... At most three story house! And I can probably assume that they were fighting on the balcony, so that's a two story fall. It, you know what? Why am I analyzing this? They're dead! It's good! We can end this travesty! Oh, but then we got graveyard stock footage as Hannah visits Hank's grave. 2011. Thanks for dating the film. I'll be sure to chalk this up right next to all of the terrible things that happened in 2011. Oh, and this guy shows up, and he's super drunk or something, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. He's here to make fun of the fact that he's dead, that he killed Lisa. Huh. Going back to the joke I made, I guess he really couldn't go on without Lisa. Oh, and he pees on his grave because, I don't know, this movie just, just... Can't get enough toilet humor, I guess. Because, gee, I guess Hank is really dead, isn't he? No, he's not dead! He fell off a second story balcony! Why would he be dead? I'm more concerned to the fact that they buried him in the ground without checking his pulse! I was never dead. I was in a coma. Thanks for burying me alive, by the way. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. I guess at some point somebody probably should have taken your pulse or something. Also, that's the end of the movie. So that was the amazing bulk. It is pure garbage. Just pure, concentrated garbage. This is it. We can't get any lower than this. Every other movie I've reviewed up to this point at least resembled something that looked like a movie. Except maybe Dusk's Dawn, but at least that had some original assets. At least Food Fight could afford to make their own 3D models. And you think I can't get any harsher than that? At least the Emoji Movie could afford to animate something with some semblance of competence. I'm serious. There is literally nothing positive I have to say about this movie. Nothing. It fails in every single aspect. And I mean that. Even if this was intended as a joke, it's not funny. This movie takes itself way too seriously. It drags on and on for what feels like hours in a movie that only lasts for an hour and 15 minutes. The acting and sound quality make me want to stab out my eardrums. The plot is beyond generic and predictable. And of course, the whole thing is filmed in front of a green screen. Most of the time, they're probably not even using actors. It's just 3D models. 3D models purchased off of the internet. This is literally Asset Flip the movie. This isn't one of those movies you need to see to believe. This is a movie that you need to erase from your mind and forget it ever existed. I watched this movie so you don't have to. I did you a favor. And I pointed out yet another reason 
as to why humans cannot be trusted. My name is Hunter, and this has been a Hunter Review. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a massage scheduled at the spa in an hour. I need it now. Thanks. There once was a guy who created a machine A thing that would take people to and from some other world And when he arrived, he had run into a pony Who smiled and decided that they both should go see a film When that movie sucked, they decided to join forces And then they created a new show called Hunter Reviews